The Taming of the Shrew has been enormously popular for the last 400 years. It's also troubled a lot of readers and audience members over the last 400 years. It produces lots of adaptations, spin-offs, rewrites, 10 Things I Hate About You, Kiss Me Kate. Those are just some of the recent ones. On and on and on, partly because the play itself is so beloved and so kind of culturally sanctioned by having been done so many times um, it feels so central to English language culture but also because people aren't comfortable with it so do want to rewrite it um, now some of you might read this play and feel that Petruchio Petruchio is sexist and problematic and if you feel those things I am not going to try to talk you out of it always a good case to be made <laughs> good case to be made and honestly uh, there are there, I should point out there are feminist critics there are female feminist scholars with great minds who have tried to salvage this play or make a case for what is actually what subverts the sexism or what makes this actually a pro woman play I will direct you to those readings I don't make them myself and I don't really have it in my heart to make them if you are um, if Petruchio or Petruchio aka Petruchio reminds you of the person you live with and you're deciding whether to stay or whether to go don't let Catherine keep you in that relationship make a plan run like hell as always in the pandemic year stay safe on the other hand, should this play be like this play also, does, though I have problems with it myself, it deserves attention. It's part of our cultural heritage, including part of our not our ugly cultural heritage. The people were laughing at some of the things in this a generation or two back that some people enjoy it now is uh, is problematic. Um, it is sometimes treated as a very early play by Shakespeare for a couple reasons. One is there's an alternate version that's printed when he's 30 um, that resembles this in general terms, but is specifically very different, as in all the words are different. When I talked about close reading, how the details of the words matter, if you stack up this play against the taming of a shrew, um, which is mostly the same plot put in different words, you will see where Shakespeare's magic lies rephrase it all and bye bye poetry scholars actually want to make taming of the the Shakespeare version that we know the version in your book they want to put that earlier than the other version so they can claim that Shakespeare is being ripped off rather than Shakespeare was revising there are all kinds of reasons for that also some people explicitly and some people tacitly want to make this an earlier play because if it's an earlier play if Shakespeare wrote it when he was a younger man it is easier to excuse the things we might find uncomfortable if a young man wrote a play if he wrote a play about you know a kind of fairly abusive figure getting a woman under his thumb when he was 27 that's not good but you know if you compare his total body of work later blah, 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 blah. if you wrote that play when he was 35 <sighs> now that's more of a problem the more mature Shakespeare is the harder it gets to put this play in a context where we can find it more forgivable it has three plots just like uh, Merchant, uh, Merchant of the Convincing Mary's Dream, it's complicated. It's a triple plot. We have, we have the story of Bianca and her suitors. This is a very standard classic plot. It could almost be the pattern of like the normal default comedy plot for this period. Shakespeare has in fact taken it from another playwright. Um, he's, <laughs> it's an Italian play that became an English play in the 1560s. He ca called it was, it's called it's Ariosto's I Suppositi, then it's George Gascoigne's Supposes, and now it's the A plot or B plot, depending on any account of Taming the Shrew. Shakespeare borrows and rewrites liberally. Um, there's no copyright law. There's Bianca and her suitors, and the kind of changes how we're going to get around the father, 
and it's a standard let's get around dad comedy plot young upper class but not too upper class folks getting up to hijinks to get around dad and, and everyone gets married and they're all they're all mostly happy in the end um down to clever servants playing tricks magnifique we will talk more about that there is the taming plot which is very different um, it is not our normal thing at all, and I will talk more about why it is different from the standard comedy plot, but which seems to us the much more vibrant, and it seems to us the focus of the play. This play is never titled Bianca Meets Some Boys. It's always about Petruchio and Catherine. Petruchio and Catherine. They are our stars. We view them as the primary plot, although in many ways they behave like the kind of goofier, they behave like the goofier, more clown-like couple who come as the kind of usual B or C comedy, uh, like romantic pairing. And then we have a frame story. We have a story of Christopher Sly, a drunken beggar thrown out of an alehouse on a cold night, um, picked up by a lord, dressed up and convinced he's been dreaming for years, that he's a lord who's just been dreaming he's a beggar, and then is shown the rest of Tame the Shrew as a play within a play. It's all like, you thought there was meta theater last time, then there was, here's meta theater. The whole play itself is a play within a play and there's this frame story. Sometimes that frame story gets cut. You may notice somewhere in the middle of this play, the frame story just vanishes. Sly's just gone. He opens the play, he pops in now and then, he's watching, he finds it's, it's tedious. He'd like to sleep or drink or have sex with his wife, who in classical um, uh, English drama of this period form, form is like a boy dressed as a woman. Um, so he's, uh, he's, he's not really into this play, but this, uh, then the play is not into him and he's gone. The alternate version, the much more crudely written Tammy of Oshrew, has the whole frame. It's different, the lines are different, but it's all there. There's a conclusion where sly wakes up and he's a beggar again if the lord seems to you cruel and sadistic yeah he's doing it's a prank it's a laugh on like ha, 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 i'm a rich man and i found a drunk beggar i'm going to mess with his mind if that if that makes you uncomfortable well there are a lot of things in this play that make me uncomfortable but we have we have a triple play we have a triple plot with three very different kinds of comedy that again interlock, and the themes of which speak to each other. If the, the frame story is about disguise, illusion, theater, so is the Bianca plot, which centers on changes, changing roles, etc. And then there's the fairly theatrical pretense of Petruchio. I'm gonna go tend to my own daughter. Don't you marry Petruchio. Don't you ever marry Petruchio. You don't have, you marry who you want, daddy's got your back. 